It's a well-known footballing fact that you can't look at the table until 10 games have been played. David Moyes said it, so it must be true. So let's see what a Premier League fan from each club thinks of their season so far. Best player so far for Arsenal, we've been poor. I'm going to go with Kozlesniak or probably Montreal. They've been consistent, they've been the ones turn, standing up to be counted and the ones turning in performances. And that speaks volumes to the rest of the attacking players that haven't done that. Could you go for Jordan Ives, our player of the season so far? Playmaker and just linchpin Pascal Gross is excellent. And the reason being is that he's had his hand in pretty much every single one of Brighton's goals. Without him, I shudder to think how many points we'd have. Ishii Batshuayi, the goals that he's scored have been huge for us. The winner in the last minute away in Madrid meant the world and equally I think a turning point in our season was when he came off the bench to rescue the three points against Watford. It's a non-contest. It's Will Saha, by some way. Jordan Pickford, I think he's been fantastic. After 10 games, I think it's probably a toss-up for who the best Huddersfield player is so far between Schindler and Aaron Moy for me. Will Salah has been an absolute highlight. You know, we brought him in for a lot of money. He scored a lot of goals for us. Uh, so far this season. Harry Maguire, absolute snip for 17 million. Signed early on in the uh, summer. One of the, the first bits of business Leicester City did and what a bit of business it was. Romelu Lukaku, living up to expectations. Yes, he may have gone a couple of games without getting a goal, but he got an assist for Anthony Martial's winner against Tottenham Hotspur and he scored seven in seven. His first seven games for Manchester United and the only, only other striker to have done that for Manchester United in the Premier League is Andy Cole. Yeah, well, it has to be Kevin De Bruyne, currently the best player in the Premier League, in my humble opinion. He's been absolutely phenomenal. Mikel Moreno, what an absolute find he has been by Rafa Benitez. There was a lot of talk, you know, that Rafa Benitez didn't get any, any of his men in in late January. Newcastle fans were all disappointed, but what a find he has been. Kurt Zuma, on loan from Chelsea. Um, I don't think there's any chance that we'll sign him come the end of the season, but so far he's been an absolute rock and man mountain. I, uh, I feel we'll be doing a lot, lot worse without him. Without a doubt, Mario Lamina. He's been absolutely fantastic alongside Romeo in the heart of midfield. Uh, Lucas Fabianski, our goalkeeper. Um, he's had a brilliant season so far. All you have to do is look at our, our game against um, Tottenham Hotspur to see how, how crucial he's been. Um, I mean, the fact that we've played nine games and we've kept four, key, four clean sheets. I think it's, it's a really um, crazy stat that uh, we've kept more clean sheets in this season um, so far than the last two seasons combined. The best player for Tottenham this season has got to be Harry Kane. He's already got 17 goals. Um, he's firing on all cylinders. Man of the season so far is, uh, is Abdoulaye Decoré. What an absolutely extraordinary midfielder he is. Um, it's just his engine, his long legs, he's just, um, he gets the tackle in, he gets, he gets the ball moving, he, he, he moves forward, he's just an absolute machine of a player. Ahmed Hagazi, um, £875,000 loan fee from uh, Al Ali, the Egyptian side. Hagazi has been a revelation at centre-back. I think most hammers will agree with me that it has to be Pablo Zabaleta. The guy is just a constant professional. Just week in, week out, he puts in a shift and, you know, games where, you know, the team haven't performed well, we've played awful, he's been the only player who can hold his head up high. The Liverpool away. Yes, there's been some other disappointments, the Watfords, the Stokes, but Liverpool, what did you hear prior to that? We need to turn up away from home. We need to put in a good showing away from home. Away form cost us last year. Away form in big games cost us last year. Our performances in big games cost us last year. So to see cluelessness from the central midfielders, to see lifelessness from the strikers, to see just, just being scared and no bravery from the defenders, and it, it was just a shambles. Although some games have literally just been a disaster, um, Everton away was the most disappointing. Now he's linked in there, Sean Nash is linked everywhere, and uh, he is the key for Burn's success. He is the key to Burn's success. I guess my biggest disappointment is the fact that there has been some real knife edge situations where we could have got points where we haven't. We failed to sign a striker to back up Christian Benteke, and then of course Benteke got injured a few weeks later, so now we're having to try Zaha and Townsend up front as double false nines. We've got Bakary Sacco having a go. Scott Dan for a little bit was up there. Our biggest disappointment so far this season has to be our home defeat to Manchester City. They outplayed us, they were far too good for us. We actually couldn't get the ball off them. Davy Klassen, um, he came in with a big reputation. You know, the Ajax captain, I thought he was gonna come in and make himself 
you know, an integral part of this Everton team under Koeman. And he just hasn't got used to the pace of the Premier League. Injuries. And by that, I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying that we've got a very, we've got a small squad and we've put a lot of players together in a short space of time. So injuries to strikers and to Casey Palmer as hurt us. Our defence is what's letting us down and I think every football fan knows that at the moment. Not seeing out a couple of the matches has been my biggest disappointment so far this season. Ander Herrera's poor form has really caught me by surprise. A player who I absolutely love. A player who I hailed as potential captain material last year. Literally no disappointment so far. I, I, I can't really point to any. It's... I can wrap up any as not getting these players that you wanted. Um, he's fell out with the board three times already in 2017. Probably Kevin Vimmer. So far, he's he's been okay at best. He's not really looked remotely near an £18 million player. Recruitment. Uh, just to give you an idea, last season, um, Kyle Norton got injured and we didn't have any backup fullbacks, any useful ones anyway. Um, so we ended up playing Leroy Fur, who is an attacking midfielder. We played him at right back. You'd think in the summer, the club would look at that and say, we need some fullbacks. What did our club do instead? They sold our backup left back and didn't replace him and didn't buy a new fullback. The biggest disappointment so far this season is the result against West Ham at Wembley. I mean, firstly gave them bragging rights, which is horrible to stomach, um, but also it's a genuine chance of winning some trophies uh, and uh, it's probably our, our best chance, despite how good we are. Um, it probably shows how far we've come that this is the, the one I'm going to highlight really, this is going to, I'm going to isolate as the biggest disappointment and that was our recent loss to Chelsea. Losing leads late on in matches, thinking back to uh, the games against Stoke, uh, Watford and Leicester. Albion have thrown away six points there and six points that has been very, very costly. It has to be Crystal Palace away recently. Um, to, to be this close to getting the vital three points and for Mikel Antonio to sort of throw it away by making a silly mistake, that was gut-wrenching. Repetitive, tedious, tiring, stale. These are words attached with Arsenal and have been attached with Arsenal for many, many years now. You, you know it, I know it. I'm surprised you've even asked me that question, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'd expect a little bit better, but in any we trust. He won't leave us half through the season. I think that if Sean Dash leaves, it will do it at, at the end of the season. So that he gives, he doesn't want to like ruin the work that he's already done. He's put five years of work into our club to change our club, transform it massively. So I cannot imagine him leaving. Chris Hewton has been excellent. He's been nowhere near as cagey as people worried he was going to be. Which one? Because we're already on to our second manager of the season with Roy Hodgson. He knows Palace, he's a local lad, Croydon born, Palace fan. He gets the fans, he's saying the right things and the team finally seems to be doing the right thing. So, at the moment, pretty happy with Roy. In Antonio Conte, we have the greatest manager in the league. He has universal love from the fans. He has clearly, clearly has a brilliant rapport with the players, and Chelsea need to do all they can to keep that man happy. Any talk of a crisis, any talk of Antonio Conte losing his job is complete nonsense. It's been a nightmare, really. I think, obviously, we started the season hoping to be kicking on, you know, and get closer to the top six. We, we ran them close last season, a lot of investment this summer, and we all hoped that Ronald Koeman had a way of playing, had a plan, had an idea of how it was going to work out, and it doesn't look like he had any kind of plan. That's how it, that's how the season has gone so far. My thoughts on, on, on Wagner hasn't changed really from when we got promoted. Um, we're doing better than we should be. We're punching above our weight. Um, and to have got a team together that's not only competing in the Premier League but that's beaten Man United, we, <laughs> you know, it's better than when we had Chris Powell, right? Mixed reaction from the fans as to whether Puel will do well or not. However, we've got to get behind him, we've got to give him that chance. Jose Mourinho has been playing the Jose Mourinho way. It's exactly what we knew it was going to be, but there's been some exciting attacking flair. We scored 11 goals in the last 10 minutes of matches. 
And that is a crucial point of how Jose Mourinho is managing this team. Guardiola is a freakish manager. In my opinion, he's the best coach in the world. Uh, and I'm loving watching his team play at the moment because it's not just the manner, uh, it's just not, not just the victories, it's the manner of the victories. Absolutely love Rafa. We all do. Um, all Newcastle fans, when they start talking about Rafa, the first thing is do smiling. It's natural. I'm starting to smile already. Uh, the man's loved. He's got a bit of, he's got aura around him, uh, similar to what Bobby Robson has. You look at it and think, oh, wow, this, this man can give us hope if he has the right tools. So how has Hughes done so far this season? A lot of fans really wanted him out come the end of last season. That seemed to reset in the summer and um, fans thought we know we'd give him one more shot. But for me, I feel that he's doing just enough to keep in the job at the moment. There's been moans and groans already. We haven't got some of the results that we've, that we've wanted. Personally, I think he's still trying to figure out his best 11. Very mixed thoughts on the management, to be honest. Clement kept us up last year. It was an absolute miracle. But uh, this season just hasn't clicked. This season has been quite awful, to be honest. I think Pochettino is having uh, an amazing season. Again, at Tottenham, he's uh, got multiple ways to win a game. He reacts to the strengths of the opposition. I think we have the best manager in the league. And, and I think the trophies will come. Marco Silva has really got them ticking. Um, the players seem to understand their roles, they understand their jobs, and that's translating into confidence on the pitch. They genuinely and obviously believe in what Marco Silva's trying to get them to do, and there's just a better feel about the place. The discontent amongst the fan base was, was there to see and hear against uh, the uh, Manchester City match on Saturday. So uh, all is definitely not well in the Hawthorns camp. I just think Bilic doesn't know how to get the best out of this group of players. He, he doesn't have that creative player there to, that can create enough chances. Lanzini's good, but it's not a replacement for Pai yet. And his backroom staff are a shambles. We to be honest with you, if we get our act together, I do think we can get top four, but I cannot see that and there's no reason to suggest it's going to get any better. So it's going to be more of the same and it's going to be fifth and at best, maybe Europa League. Final prediction I'm going to go for to finish 12th. That's what I'm hoping. I think that we're still going to end up about 13th, 12th. I think we're going to survive maybe with three or four games to go and might take a foot off the pedal because we've got a history of doing that recently, but I would be so happy with that. I don't see why Chelsea can't close a gap. I believe, sod it, I believe that we will retain our Premier League title. I genuinely don't know, because with Palace, things that seem certain end up being uncertain, and things that seem uncertain somehow become certain again. I'm gonna confidently say Everton will still finish in the top 10 this season. Higher, higher than 10th. That's a big statement at the moment, because it isn't looking great, but I'm gonna go for it. Maybe even eighth. I think we're finishing anywhere between 17 and 20. We've taken the red tinted glasses off. Somewhere between 4th and 6th is probably where Liverpool are going to finish. A top 10 finish would be acceptable, providing there is a, a bit of a cup run along the way to keep us interested throughout the season. There's definitely teams in and around there that can cause problems, but I think it's going to be a 1-2 between Man United and Man City this year. And I'm hoping that that can be Manchester United. And because he's invested so much because Guardiola and Mourinho have both invested so much. Failure to win the Premier League from either manager is a failure of a season. I'm hoping and I think we're going to win the league. I know every fan will say that about their own team, but I just think the football we're playing, I think we've got a bit between our team. I think Guardiola and the players from last season all want to prove people wrong. I think the squad is young, fresh and vibrant and finally where it needs to be. I can just see us win the league. Hopefully a domestic double too. I'll just take one trophy though for now at the moment. I'm going to predict because of the season has started. Originally I said 15th, I'm going to put that to 10th. I said at the beginning of the, at the, beginning of, the of the term, I think we'll sneak into seventh. It's still achievable, but we need to find out, you know, a, a big threat and lots of positives uh, up front. I see the season playing out probably as it has done for the last few years. The manager's going to struggle until December. We sack the manager, hire a new one, sign some good players in January, and survive the drop again. I can see us having quite a boring season. It's going to go with a sort of like lose, lose, win, draw. Uh, rotation and come the end of the season I can easily see us finishing roughly about I don't know very boring to say but it's gonna be lower mid maybe 10th to 13th something like that 
This season, Spurs will finish third. I think we'll be in and amongst the top four throughout the season. I think Wembley will be a factor and Man City and Man United are both very, very good football teams. It's going to be very tough for us to mount a title challenge. So, you know, third Champions League place, I'll take that right now. I'd like to think that we could push on and finish in the top half, maybe even higher, but as a Watford supporter, you've got to be a little bit pessimistic. There's always a bit of uh, pragmatism, if you want to call it that. Um, so let's go with, I'm going to say 10th. Pulis has this knack of, of digging out results when he de most needs them. Uh, and I can see them still finishing uh, somewhere around 12th. I don't think we'll get relegated, even if we stick with Bilic. I think ultimately we're going to finish, I would say 15th.